Thank you so much for, for inviting me. It's a real joy to come here for such a wonderful, <laughs> on such a wonderful occasion. <laughs> and also, since, since I'm the last one, probably should thank the organizers for their wonderful job. And, and it was absolutely great to be here. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, uh, so uh, uh, let me, uh, I, I will talk. Uh, about um, a tal topology uh, situation, but um, let me remind first uh, uh, the theory that, that was uh, developed by Kashivara and Shapira already uh, 30 <coughs> years ago in their book, uh, Shifts on Manifolds. So here is the situation. Let X be complex manifold. Uh, of dimension n, mm. and uh, suppose that I have a constructible sheaf, or a sheaf for me will be mean complex of sheaves always. Well, with some coefficients. Mm. And then, uh, here is a definition. Uh, 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 the singular support of F uh, it is a closed subset in the cotangent bundle uh, to X uh, and it is uh, defined as follows it is uh, the smallest subset Uh, which satisfies the following condition. Uh, if we have any pair U and F, where U is an open subset in X, and F is a holomorphic function on U, such that uh, 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 if I consider the differential uh, of F, and consider its graph, then it does not intersect my closed subset uh, equals. So if I have such a pair which satisfies this condition, then uh, F is locally acyclic. relative to F. Uh, locally acyclic means that if, if, well, there is, well, I assume that the definition is known, but uh, uh, this means that um, if I will compute vanishing cycle, <laughs> cycles there will be no, there will be uh, with coefficients in F, they will be trivial. So that's the definition. And um, uh, it's uh, more or less, uh, so this is uh, that, uh, well, it's easy to, to see that this is a, a conical complex uh, sub-variety in T star X. Uh, and mm, mm, moreover, uh, it's easy to check that uh, the following two uh, completely idiotic properties that, uh, that the singular support is empty. This is the same as f equals to zero, and singular support equals the z, uh, equals x. And when I write x as a subset of cotangent bundle, this means that it's just a zero section. Uh, then this means that f is a locally constant. <coughs> and non-zero. Okay. Now. Uh, a theorem uh, a theorem they prove is the following that it is that uh, uh, well it's complex of variety we can look at its uh, irreducible components and the claim is that all irreducible components have a dimension n Uh, 
Okay, so it's evident in these two examples, but mm, it's true in general. And in fact, uh, they show that uh, the singular support is Lagrangian. Well, it's uh, some variety, of, it, it can have singularities, but and, uh, on its open part, uh, it is Lagrangian. And uh, since it's also uh, a conical subset, this means that uh, uh, actually it is uh, every irreducible component of singular support is um, the conormal uh, bundle to uh, some uh, closed sub-variety in X. By conormal uh, bundle, I mean that on smooth part you take uh, the usual conormal bundle and then you take, you take the closure. Uh, well, now, uh, so that's uh, that is uh, their first uh, uh, main theorem uh, uh, in this situation. And here is uh, another <coughs> theorem that, uh, uh, let me write it maybe on the second board. Uh, it is, uh, now suppose that my coefficient, well, is a field. Uh, well, uh, uh, then uh, the claim uh, is that, uh, well, you have a collection of sub-varieties of middle dimension, the cotangent bond, and the claim is that, uh, all, uh, uh, that one can naturally assign to every, uh, it's a reducible component, a number, an integer, so uh, which will make, uh, which will make it a cycle which is called characteristic cycle. It's denoted in, uh, in this manner, so that uh, the following properties would uh, will hold. So the first property is that suppose that we have a pair u f as before, <laughs> so we have an open subset and a, fun a holomorphic function on it. And uh, but uh, before we considered situation when differential of f did not take value in the singular support. But now support suppose that. Uh, uh, it intersects the singular support at a single point. Well, well, then we know uh, that by uh, uh, by the definition of singular support, it's true that our function f outside of x is uh, locally acyclic, so there is no vanishing cycles. And this, so this means that if I will compute uh, the vanishing cycles uh, for f, then it will be skyscraper at x. And so I can compute its dimension. Well, dimension Euler, it's complex, so it will be Euler characteristic, but let me write dimension. Well, and the claim is that the, that the following formula for this dimension holds, I should put, put here the sign minus, and then here will be the local intersection index of, we have df, which is a section, so we have df of <coughs> u, it's a sub-variety in the cotangent bundle, and here, so we consider it as a cycle, certainly with multiplicity one, and here we put the characteristic cycle, and we, uh, well, so we have two, two cycles which intersect by one point, so there is the notion of local intersection index at that point, and the claim that it will be exactly the dimension of vanishing cycles. Okay? You don't claim that the multiplicities are 
They could be positive, negative, or zero. You don't claim anything. I don't claim anything. Uh, uh, well, I will claim anything, but in a short while. Okay? <laughs> it's an equality or inequality? It's equality. It's equality. Well, so the second assertion is global. So assume that AX is compact. Then, uh, and uh, let us compute, uh, uh, let's consider the earlier characteristics of AX with coefficient in F. So this means that it's, we compute the cohomology of AX and compute the earlier characteristic. And the formula says the following, that it's just the intersection index of x and the characteristic cycle. So here is the situation. The cotangent bundle itself, it's certainly non-compact. But since x is, you have zero section, and x itself is compact, then certainly you can intersect x with cycle of complementary dimensions as is well defined in the, uh, integer and the claim that you have that you have this equality. Well, now uh, the last uh, property uh, is uh, the answer to offers a uh, question. And let me put it here. That if f is perverse, If f is perverse shift, uh, then uh, a characteristic cycle is effective. Find it for a usual shift, so the same works for a bounded complex? Uh, well, uh, yeah, uh, yes. What, what do you mean the same holds for bounded? You consider the condition that uh, Universally lo so locally acyclic in the sense of uh, of the vanishing cycle R phi being <coughs> yes in the sense of vanishing cycle. okay but you can do it for either F to be a single shift or an object in the derived category uh, for me shift means object in the derived category okay but is it but you don't claim that what you get <laughs> is ah, okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, a singular support is a just subset, no coefficients. A characteristic cycle has coefficients. And you can have singular support huge, but characteristic cycle uh, being zero. For example, take any f, shift it by one, uh, and take direct sum. Singular support will not change, but vanishing cycle will disappear. Uh, sorry, characteristic cycle will disappear. Do you want to say that this cycle is uniquely determined by F? Uh, yes, uh, more, uh, yes, uniquely determined by F, uh, so th that I will say in a moment, okay? So this first condition actually completely determines characteristic cycle. Well, it's clear that if you have, if you have any component, then you can choose, you can find function which, whose differential intersects uh, the thing at its smooth part. And then, and then this formula will produce you, immediately produce you the multiplicities. Okay. Uh, what is? And not only effective, but with strictly positive multiplicity. Yes, that I did not, yes. And moreover, the, uh, it's strictly positive, so the support of uh, CC equals the singular support. Okay, so uh, uh, one comment is that certainly characteristic cycle depends, well, it uh, depends on the shift in additive manner. So it's, in, it's a homomorphism from uh, the K group of, K0 group of uh, constructible shifts to, to the group of uh, cycles. On the cotangent bundle, that follows immediately from this uh, formula. Uh, formula one. Uh, well, uh, uh, the second thing is that uh, let's consider an uh, example when my shift is constant. 
Then, uh, uh, as I told you, uh, the uh, singular support, it is a zero section. And by the last property, you see that, well, uh, uh, equals x, and maybe let me write that characteristic cycle equals minus 1 power n times x. Uh, well, and then uh, uh, let us see. So this first formula then, uh, uh, it is exactly Milner's formula. So what stands to the right, it is exactly the uh, Milner's number of the singularity of f. So this x means that it's critical point. So if it's intersects zero, and here stands the, single, the Milner's number, and here stands the dimension of vanishing cycle, and minus has to do that because I normalize it to be positive for perverse shift, and not usual one that you can forget. And uh, uh, similarly, the second thing is this, the formula of the Euler characteristic. Well, here it tells you that it's self-intersection of the zero section of the cotangent bundle. And again, because of this uh, sign, sign thing, this is equivalent to the standard formula that the Euler characteristic with, of, of, a, of a manifold is self-intersection number of the diagonal. So uh, at least in this situation, everything is uh, perfectly uh, fine. Uh, uh, so one uh, last remark about uh, Kashivara Shipra is that, is that their proofs are very transcendental. Uh, for example, they uh, actually, they, the theory they develop, uh, it, uh, it works on real analytic manifolds. Uh, uh, and uh, in, if you consider real analytic manifolds, then you can uh, refine any real analytic stratification to, uh, to just decomposition by simplices. Uh, and uh, in such situation, constructible shifts are easy, and so you can you can work it. But it's extremely transcendental operation, and you cannot just just push it to uh, to a tight situation. Yeah, just one question about formula two: that the right hand side is the Hodge gives you Hodge cohomology, right? Not the wrong cohomology on the right. Uh, what do you mean by? Well, if you count x, the intersection number of x with a zero cycle, with itself in the cotangent bundle, yes, that gives you the Hodge numbers, right? Why? It gives you one number. Pardon? No, it's, it's just usually a characteristic. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, sh I should. Before, I see. The first yes. time I heard about this was Wolinski. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, I should. I should certainly. I should certainly have have told that uh, their story is uh, was completely motivated. It came not from topology at all, uh, and not from uh, uh, complex geometry, but from the theory of the models. And in theory of the models, uh, the notion of singular support of the models that's one of the very first notion and basic technical notion, how you just develop the theory of the models from the very beginning, uh, and um, uh, the notion. Uh, well, it is. Uh, there is standard, the basic fact is that singular, sub, you can define for any model, but it will have dimension uh, uh, larger than n. And those demodels which have, for which singular support has dimension n, it's the basic uh, geometric objects, those are holonomian demodels. And uh, the formula, uh, multiplicities, again, are also defined just from the very, from the very definition, like multiplicities and commutative algebra. And uh, the formula, this global, global Euler characteristic formula in uh, the RAM settings, so for the models, it is, uh, it is I think it's, it, it is due to Brilinsky, Dobson, and Kashivara, if, I, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But I should, I should stress that in this definition, it's, uh, it, it's, it's uh, proof is extremely simple. It is, it is, it, it is one, uh, one line theorem. Uh, and compare, compared to a quite complicated uh, proof that, uh, mm, that, that you do for constructible shifts, both definition actually proof us. But, but it's, it's, again, it's one line proof, but it's extremely non-motivic. It's, it's just the structure that you deal with the models and not with German. And they also prove that, that when you have, when the coefficients are characteristic zero, then 
it corresponds to the demodule characteristic cycle? Uh, yes, they prove that it corresponds to the demodule characteristic cycle. Sorry, I should not have, have, um, uh, uh, have omitted the history, but I, anyway, further, further on, I will, I will omit also other parts. So, well, uh, and not so much of time. Uh, well, now, uh, uh, the basic question uh, that uh, 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 the story I, I will be talking about is uh, the question if you can, you can just, just uh, if similar assertion hold, uh, in a tal situation, and uh, if you if you look uh, if you look at this definition, everything. Uh, well, suppose that we work now with algebra with an algebraic variety over some field, uh, then uh, you can see that everything in principle makes sense. So the definition uh, there makes sense, and you can you can you can uh, all the statements of the theorem make make perfect sense, uh, and mm, uh, uh, and uh, in fact. Uh, so, so what I will be talking about is yes, that, uh, that uh, it's okay, but with minor modifications. So let me do the minor modifications first, and then, uh, then I will discuss the story. Uh, uh, so here is a minor modification. So let's consider first the case of the case of constant sheaf, and then certainly mm, mm, uh, then uh, uh, the Milner's formula. Uh, well, it's known that it's true, but uh, you should. In case of it's true in case when the base field has zero characteristic, but if it has finite characteristic, it should be slightly modified. And uh, this, uh, namely here, instead of dimension, there should, should stand total dimension. And uh, the word total means that, uh, well, it's a vector space on which uh, the Galois group of uh, of the disk down below for a puncture disk down below acts. And in case of finite characteristic. You can have wide ramif uh, wealth ramification, and uh, total means that you add to dimension the term uh, the Swan conductor. Mm. And uh, the formula in uh, the corresponding formula for constant shift, uh, it was uh, proved uh, by Dolin in the second uh, volume of SJ7. There is his talk, which is exactly called Milner's formula. Mm. So. Mm, mm, well, so that's one modification mm, mm, that should be made. Uh, and uh, another modification uh, uh, I should make, uh, make on the left, left board. And this is OK. So uh, this assertion is false. and. Uh, uh, and uh, as for the rest assertions, yes, uh, they're uh, all true. Uh, and uh, so what is, uh, is done on the left blackboard, uh, uh, well, uh, there is uh, my note on archive that proves the theorem. And what is on the uh, right blackboard is proved in, uh, in a preprint of Takeshi Saito, which is probably also on the archive, or it will be at archive nearest future. OK. Uh, 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 now, uh, maybe before, uh, before I will uh, uh, continue the talk, let me comment about this situation, why the thing is not Lagrangian. And uh, it is uh, uh, the fact that you really just uh, that Lagrangian property must disappear in characteristic P, P. I think it was, well, at least I first heard it from uh, Dolin long ago back, back in Moscow. Uh, but, uh, and somehow at, at, at that moment you think that there is no theory and, um, and stop <laughs> thinking about this. Uh, well, anyway, so let me, uh, let me produce an example. Well, maybe, uh, uh, maybe first, uh, first I need notation since I, I will, it's convenient, and I will also use it uh, uh, afterwards. So suppose that you have a map between uh, uh, between algebraic var uh, uh, smooth algebraic varieties, and uh, which is proper. Uh, and suppose that I have a conic subvariety inside of the cotangent bundle to Y. And then it yields 
nature, in a nature, in a, well, in a pretty standard way, uh, a conical subvariant and the cotangent bundle to X. Uh, which I will denote uh, in this manner. And by definition, it consists of all points in the cotangent bundle. So what it will be x and covector nu at x, such that there exists y uh, with the properties that it lives in the fiber and such that df at point y applied to nu will lie in c. There is a, there is a standard way to push, uh, to push forward uh, the, conical, uh, the conical subset for, um, uh, by the proper map. And, um, uh, and a small remark uh, that it follows directly from the definition that if I have a sheaf G uh, on y, well, let me denote by d of y uh, the category of. Pardon? R. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's R. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. That if I have a sheaf on y, then uh, uh, the. Mm, uh, uh, if I consider its direct image, uh, this will be a sheaf on X. And if I compute its singular support, then it lies inside of uh, the image in that sense of the singular support of G. So this thing gives you an upper estimate for the singular support. Uh, one a small remark that this hyperestimate can be clever in the sense that if R is closed embedding, then you have equality. But if R, but uh, on the other hand, it can be extremely stupid. For example, if R is Frobenius map, then uh, this, produ this produces you the whole the whole cotangent bundle, and so it has it has just uh, it, it just tells you nothing. In, uh, in the case of characteristic zero, it tells you, all, always tells you something. Uh, but in characteristic P, no. Well, now, uh, 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 now example. Uh, uh, let's consider uh, a map, uh, just uh, R, uh, Y and X will be for us just the coordinate planes. Uh, And I want, uh, and I want that it will be uh, that the map actually depends only uh, well that the second coordinate would not change. So it will be given by a formula. Uh, uh, well, let's denote the coordinates here as t and y, and here as x and y, and this will be say. G of T Y. Okay. So let's consider such a transformation, and my shift will be just a direct image of the constant shift on uh, on the A two. <coughs> oh. Let's consider just. Okay. So it's a shift here. Uh, now uh, and. Uh, uh, and even this, uh, in such a situation, you produced all possible things that cannot happen in characteristic zero. So let's consider the stupidest example, where g of t y equals t power p uh, plus t y square. Okay, just 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 the absolutely. Uh, absolutely easiest example. Now, what you see? Uh, so first, uh, uh, first you see that if y, uh, now what holds? So first, what properties? So first, certainly r is finite. A second property, uh, if y is not zero, so outside of 
uh, y equals y equals zero, the thing is a tile. Okay. Now let's look at what happens over over the axis y equals to zero. Yeah, you're assuming p is not equal to. Oh, p is correct. I don't care. I don't care. Uh, you mean for 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 a tile thing? Well, uh, you can you compute the, you compute the differential, and the differential will be this. You can you can forget about, and here will be y squared times dt plus plus something, and there will be will be dy, and so it's it's invertible. Okay. Now now, but now what happens on the axis? On the axis, it is very strange thing happens. You have dr. You have the map dr, and this map uh, does the following. If I have uh, if I consider the vector along the axis dt, then it sends a tangent vector. dt is sent to zero. Okay, you differentiate, and then dy. Well, dy will be sent to dy. So it is, it is a very strange map of a, uh, on, the, on this axis. It is, again, it's differential along the axis itself equals to zero, but in the normal, in the normal direction it is a density. Now, if you apply this estimate, certainly F itself, it's not, it's not local. It's not local system. It's not smooth iris ramification and so on. Uh, so therefore, its singular support will look as follows. So there will be zero section, well, because it's local system outside of the open thing, and plus something. And this, there must be something else, because it's not smooth, and the something else come exactly if we apply this estimate. And if you apply this estimate and, and look at this formula, you immediately see that, so it equals x, so the zero section, times c, where c is a cone over the axis y equals to zero, uh, generated by dt. Uh, d, uh, 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 dx, sorry. And so you see that it's 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 absolutely not not Lagrangian. <coughs> okay. So so uh, so that's uh, all for uh, all for this example. Uh, well. Uh, now maybe I should uh, let me formulate uh, a little ex ex extension of the theorem, which is uh, due to the lean. Uh, and that's assertion that if we consider many faults <laughs> of dimension two surfaces, then absolutely any uh, conical subset of dimension two in the cotangent bundle can be realized as singular support of some constructible uh, as, as a irreducible component of singular support of some constructible shift. So, so it's, it's a theorem of non-integrability of characteristics. Mm, well, uh, now uh, 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 I want uh, to discuss, uh, I, will not, I will not discuss proofs. So proofs here are not they're not difficult at all, uh, uh, but I want to to show a part of a part of the story, and this is a part of the story that explains how you see what singular support is. Uh, certainly, the, uh, singular support, for example, it's it's an interesting invariant. It's well, you have some conical things, but you don't you don't know how to see them basically because, uh, well, uh, testing by functions, it's not. Not a, not a pleasant thing to do. But now I will describe how, how one can actually see singular support and, for example, to see that it has right, it has right dimension. Mm, well, so everything, certainly uh, singular support has uh, uh, local origin. So I can assume that, uh, and also, as I told you, that if you embed something 
by closed embedding, then it transforms in an evident manner. So I can assume that uh, I live on the projective space. And uh, I will use two, uh, in order to show how the thing looks like, I will use two, uh, uh, two tools. One is uh, Brinsky's uh, radon transform, and the second is Veronese embedding. So let me uh, just uh, uh, recall momentarily what, uh, uh, what the radon transform is. So we have, uh, we have my P, uh, we have uh, the dual projective space, and we have the standard correspondence Q. Uh, well, and uh, the radon transform, it is um, mm, mm, uh, uh, so, so maybe before radon transform, then uh, you see that uh, uh, in this standard diagram, there is a canonical identification of the projectivizations of a tangent bundle to P uh, and to P check. Namely, both of them canonically identified with Q. Uh, and that's, that's a very classical thing and essentially evident because uh, what is uh, a point in, uh, say, in uh, projectivization of the cotangent bundle to P? Uh, well, it is, uh, it is a point in P and the hyperplane in the tangent space to, uh, in the tangent space to this point. Uh, and uh, certainly, he, uh, since we live on projective space, a hyperplane in the tangent space extends uniquely to a hyperplane in the whole space, passing to point. And so we get a point projective space and the hyperplane passing through it. And that's an element of Q. That is this identification. Well, in the same manner here. Well, this thing is called, by the way, uh, Legendre and Transform. Mm, and now you have uh, the Radon transform, it is a functor R from uh, uh, the category of sheaves on P to those in P check, which is given by this correspondence. Uh, well, uh, it has uh, some wonderful easy standard properties, but I will not discuss them. Well, they're used in the proof, but I will not discuss them now. Uh, uh, but one thing that is very easy, uh, very easy to check is that, uh, uh, Radon, that this identification, in a sense, in a, some sense, it's classical approximation to the Radon transform, which means the following, that if I have a sheaf F here, then I can compute Let's uh, take its singular support. That's a cone here, so I can consider the corresponding projectivized. It's projectivization, which will be some variety here. And on the other hand, I can do the same thing for, uh, for uh, the radon transform of F. Okay, and the claim is that they're the same. That's a simple, a simple fact, but I uh, do not have uh, time to describe it. Uh, instead, uh, let me pass to, uh, to the story that I want to have. Now, uh, uh, certainly just playing with uh, radon transform help you nothing. Well, if you don't know, uh, don't you know what singular support of a sheaf is, uh, then you don't know what, well, just, uh, a radon transform does not help immediately, but it helps after the very nice embedding. So let's do the following. Let's consider uh, an embedding of my projective space. Let's call it now small projective space. A very nice embedding, uh, well, of some degree, uh, more than one, any degree. And let me, uh, and then I will do radon transform on this larger projective space. So I have P, let's embed it. So this will be very nice embedding. And then I consider the larger projective space and the radon transform on this, on this larger space. Okay. 
well, mm, now a uh, notation uh, for, uh, suppose that I have a cone C inside of T star P. Well, then I can consider its image by I extended to a cone here. Well, and uh, then I would like to take its projectivization and just, just notation will be that I will denote it by C in square bracket. And this thing leaves here, so here and here. Okay, well, that's the first notation and um, uh, 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 and second, uh, uh, so we have f now which lives here. And uh, what I want to do is to apply all this functor. So I consider <coughs> the Radon transform of I star f. So this is a sheaf here. And uh, let's look at its ramification divisor. And the ramification divisor means the following that I just restrict it to the generic, generic point. So there I have local system. And then local system extends as a local system well, wherever it can extend and, and where it can at its ramification divisor. Ramification divisor of uh, Well, so I consider it, so I need to define it, I need to know the thing at the generic point of my projective space. Good. Uh, now the theorem. So when you say divisor, you mean multiplicity? Oh, uh, no, 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 just, 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 just plain subset. So it's subset of co-dimension one with no multiplicities. Hmm? F is any shift on P, on small p. No, but do you take the ramification divisor of the Radon transform? Yes. So okay. I, 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 it is not derived, I, I, okay. I take, I allow a star F, then I take R means Radon and not right derived. I'm sorry, <laughs> there is no right derived functor in this, in this notation. But F is a complex of shifts. F is a complex of shifts. <laughs> Well, uh, now the theorem. So, uh, in formula, uh, uh, it is the way how you reconstruct from, from D, which is somehow visible invariant of F, that you can reconstruct the singular support of F. And it, it tells you, uh, this in particular tells you that it has right dimension. Okay, so, th so the first assertion is that uh, D itself can, uh, can be recovered from this thing, namely it's just the image of C in square brackets. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So now from now on, let's put C equal the singular support of F. Okay. okay. Then uh, D equals image of. Excuse me, I think this slide that mm -hmm. I had trouble reading the third line from the bottom. Uh, that? The bottom. Yeah. So there's some symbols. So it's I not C, C, T star, P till I know, it's contained. I know, it's contained. Subset. I know, it's subset. subset of T star. Subset sign. Ah, subset sign. <laughs> and then that is P upper star? No, the next, the, 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 the next, no, the next is projectivization. projectivization. It's projectivization of the cone. So I have C, which lives over small p, then I extend it in a standard way of the cone, and then I projectivize. Maybe there are two tilde there on the right. Yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely, thank you. Well, here, well, these notations were without tilde, but, okay. Now, so that is the first thing. Second, 
uh, the second assertion is, uh, moreover, so my D has uh, uh, different reducible components, and C has different reducible components. And the claim is that in this manner, they correspond one to another, namely that for, for every irreducible component d alpha of d, uh, there is a unique irreducible component c alpha of c such that uh, d alpha equals d. <coughs> so uh, basically that uh, this there are another thing, and then you do Legendre transform, and somehow spreads components that could here, they could project to something the same in P, uh, position in P, but when you do the thing, they will project to absolutely different. Is this uh, the effect of Veronese embedding? Yes, that's the effect of Veronese embedding. That's exactly. Hmm? Any? Pardon? Pardon? Any. Any of degree more than one. Identity, identity is not allowed. And of course, you shouldn't <laughs> allow the, the zero-dimensional projective space. <laughs> <laughs> then I already pointed out that this, then you, you don't Probably. Well, <laughs> you don't enlarge it much, but then you can have a bedding, so you cannot talk to <laughs> Zero dimension, yes. <laughs> okay. And now three. <laughs> is that actually this uh, condition two, it uniquely defines C alpha. So that C alpha, in fact, C alpha is a, a unique cone of uh, in T star P of dimension of dimension n uh, with that property, with property two. Okay. Uh, okay, and maybe I should say also, well, uh, maybe I should say also property four, that the map Uh, this projection from C alpha to D alpha is generically radical. You are in the small uh, projective space or the big one? Pardon? C alpha is in the small or in the No, 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 no. no. Uh, oi, oi, I am sorry, so here should be bracket. I'm sorry. And the, and the, the uh, no, no, here is, here is, thank you. <laughs> okay. So the thing is generically radical. In a uh, uh, classical situation, uh, uh, classi oh, sorry, in characteristic zero situation, uh, in fact, um, this is, uh, the map is biration, well, certainly it's birational, and also this, the thing is, well, it sits in the <coughs> cotangent bundle, projectivization of the cotangent bundle to P tilde, yes, and D is divisor there, and this is projectivization of the conormal to the alpha. But in case of characteristic P, in a case of finite characteristics, this is absolutely does not need to be, it needn't be true, so since it needn't be Lagrangian, uh, the singular support, well, but somehow you can uh, you can recover it from uh, the alpha. So what about multiplicities? Hmm? What about multiplicities? About multiplicities a little bit later. I okay. So uh, I will. <laughs> well, maybe uh, the question is that I would uh, very much want to know how to recover the thing as geometrically as possible, even in case of. Uh, projection of surfaces, finite projection of one surface to another direct image of uh, constant shift. So here we were lucky that we could recover it by the stupid situation. But even just, just iteration of those two things of degree P, it will, it will uh, uh, lend you to a situation that you just cannot, cannot recover it from geometry 
I cannot, but probably some deeper, uh, deeper geometry. Veronese, just to avoid a linear something, the things which are linear, which will break the... Uh, no. Uh, if, you ask, uh, if your sheaf at the beginning has, has nothing, uh, no, no, no locus of ramification which is linear. Uh, no, 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 no. It is, uh, you see, uh, you see, if you have identity, identity, identity map, then, uh, 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 then the thing is just indices a bijection between, between quadratic cones. So if you have absolutely any quadratic cones, cone, it, it, it need not have image, uh, its image need not be divisor, it need not be radial over its image, and so on. You can just, just take anything and then, then go back and pr produce you, uh, the corresponding sheaf. So Veronese uh, does something very drastic. Okay, now uh, let's pass to characteristic cycle. Uh, well, uh, uh, Takeshi's work, it is, well, it's subtle and it uses many other inputs. Uh, so this, this story is, is pretty rough and elementary. Uh, and mm, I, uh, uh, and I cannot, I cannot discuss it just, just because of the absence of time. But instead of it, I will uh, try, uh, well, uh, there is some, something to be, to be done there yet. It's not all the story. And uh, one thing that uh, uh, comes in uh, Takeshi's story is that characteristic cycle in uh, what he can do, it has not integral coefficients, but there are, could be powers of p in the denominator. And that's for the reason that components of C can have can be purely inseparable over its image, and uh, the multiplicity in the intersection in Milner's formula will have unavoidable powers of p. Uh, and mm, uh, and uh, so, so that's one thing that one would like very much to do. Now, what I would like to, to, to say is sort of a, a well, maybe hoped for formalism that would explain the story. Also, I hope it will provide understanding of things like you can consider uh, for global intersection formula for the Euler characteristic, you can ask for finer things. So for example, how com to compute the determinant of cohomology. And I would like to have, to have just that, the story simultaneously and to have a definition of characteristic, some finer definition of characteristic cycle, which would answer also the second question. And that would not, uh, involve uh, in itself this, that, that would be mm, this uh, proof that it does not depend on the choice of mm, functions in Milner formula and so on, but somehow Milner formula uh, will be just corollary. So mm, let me try to put, to put this in the remaining uh, uh, minutes, let me try to put, to put it on the blackboard. So first, there is a notion of the moment you have the notion of singular support, you have the notion of uh, uh, microlocal shifts. Uh, well, usual usual shifts they live on our space, and uh, for, and we can and the category of shifts, the triangulated category, they form a shift of triangulated categories on my space. I can consider for every open, and consider the corresponding category, and this will be. So we have. D sheaf of triangulated categories on X. Well, uh, the moment we have the notions of singular support, we have uh, uh, we can do the following thing. We can consider the cotangent bundle. Sorry, can you, can you write that again? I can't read what you wrote. We have my, uh, our manifold X, and D, D is, well, uh, it's a sheaf sheaf of triangulated categories on X. So I sign to open set the category of sheaves, the triangulated category of sheaves on it. But it is not a sheaf where... <coughs> well, it's in, 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 uh, in, modern, in modern parlance, the triangulated category means whatever, whatever infinity <laughs> index you will put there. Uh, okay, uh, now, uh, uh, the moment I have the notion of singular support, uh, uh, you can microlocalize D over the cotangent bundle. 
uh, well, so consider the cotangent bundle, but I will consider it not with plane the risky topology, but on, only those open subsets which are conical. On, well, conical. Uh, well, how how you define it? Well, so if you have uh, if you have an open conical subset <coughs> in T star X, then we can put d mu of u. This will be the quotient of d of X modulo the thick subcategory of those sheaves whose singular support lies in the complement of u. So this is, well, this is a pre-shift of triangulated categories. It has natural T-structure, which has to do with perverse structure here. And uh, you can ask about things like co-dimension three conjecture, but uh, that, I, that I don't, don't want to discuss, but just let's consider this data. Now, mm, uh, uh, now what, uh, uh, what, I want, uh, uh, what I want to consider uh, uh, what sort of a question I want to, to try to ask is the following. So suppose that my X, I will assume that X is compact from now on. <coughs> and then I would, uh, we have considered the functor R gamma from D of X to just to lambda modules. So it's, let the point be uh, K be algebraically closed. So Mm, and then I can uh, pass to the corresponding map between K theory spectra. <laughs> and uh, what I want to do to know is to find to find this uh, to find this map, this homotopy homotopy map of spectra. You so. No, K is K theoretic equivalence K spectrum. Uh, so in particular, if I have a sheaf, then I have actual sheaf, then I have a, it defines your point here. And so I, if I know the thing, I will know the homotopy, its image, it will be homotopy point here. And such a homotopy point defines you, defines you whatever you want. It defines your LR characteristic if you pass to connected, connected components. If you look at uh, as an element in Poincaré groupoid, it will define you that R gamma. And all the things. So, so that's actually what we want to have. Well, now uh, let me try to uh, try to put on uh, on the blackboard uh, what I want to. Oh yes, I will. I will. Okay, so I want to, uh, basically I want to have a localization of, so we have this map, and I want to localize it twice. I want to localize it with respect to X, and then I want to, to micro-localize it to the cotangent bundle. And the claim is that it's all that is needed for the theory of, uh, of characteristic cycles. So, so let's see. So we have, mm, so we have point, X and the cotangent bundle X and let me denote this by uh, by pi and this will be P well and here on this zero level we have this story this map that I want to, to understand uh, what does it mean to localize <laughs> Uh, to localize the thing to X. Well, uh, as I told you, D itself, it forms 
sheaf of categories, of triangulated categories of on X, and then I can apply to it K, and it's easy to see that I will get uh, a sheaf of spectra. Let's call it K of D. That's sheaf of spectra over X. Okay? Now, what I want to do is to find first a map now it's a map of sheaf of spectra to the following thing. So, so this is, again, this is a spectrum over the point. And I want to consider its upper shriek pullback to X. So I will say in a moment what it means. Well, uh, such things, uh, well, uh, let's uh, consider usual, usual spectra as part of uh, uh, Mativic spectra of uh, uh, that is here spec kind of sense of topology. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Spectra for me is, is always in the sense of topology. Mativic spectra in the sense of a one homotopy, a one of homotopy theory. So the thing is, uh, the thing is Mativic spec shift of Mativic spectrum over X, uh, and it looks as follows. So in, if instead, if instead of K of lambda, this will be Z, and for example, if lambda is a field, you have map to Z. Then upper shriek pullback looks as follows, so we should take Tate, Tate motif, and then we should shift it by to N, and then put it to X. Okay, so that will be situation in, in, in case of Z. So this will be the thing. Well, now, uh, so what I want to have is to, to get this basically uh, basically, it should come by a junction. So what sits here is essentially the map from direct image. So X is compact from direct image of this. This is a part of direct image, and you have a map to K of lambda. And I want to have this by to get to get such a map uh, by junction. By uh, by the way, it is not. Mm, uh, uh, well, in usual, uh, such thing exists in uh, in classical usual usual topology, but in uh, in algebraic geometry, it is, it's much more interesting. Maybe I will give. Ah, do I have two minutes? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we have this picture now. Uh, so here we'll, I will put small uh, question mark, and here there will be a larger question mark. Uh, the larger question mark is uh, this. So let's consider this arrow. So I assume that it exists. And now consider it's just plain pullback by P. So here we'll get mm. <coughs> Okay, now, uh, uh, well, so this shift uh, uh, well, the shift of spectra, it has natural uh, natural map. I recall that there was this d mu, and there is uh, the corresponding k shift. <coughs> well, there is a map from pullback of d to d mu, and that, that's that's a map on the corresponding k spectra. And now, now. Hmm? we are on this direction now. Yes, we are living now here. So here. So here we live over the point, here we live over x, and here we live over t star x. Or maybe let me put question mark on the right. So small, and here there will be large. Okay? And the larger is that there is an absolutely canonical map here. Well, now, uh, 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 what I know is that if you uh, live in classical situ in the situation of Kashavar and Shipara and work with classical topology instead of uh, motifs, then such a construction exists. Well, now uh, uh, I believe that uh, uh, if uh, well, that it should come if you uh, if one understands how this story with singular support actually related to the story with. Uh, vanishing cycles over multidimensional bases, and that map should come by itself. Uh, just, just for the reason that in, in Kashivara Shipara situation, it's essentially playing with uh, vanishing cycles over multidimensional bases. Uh, well, uh, but somewhere, uh, 
some version of it for usual topology. Well, now uh, I would, let me just, uh, so the claim is that whenever you have such a formula, then you have, uh, then you have uh, all things that you wish to have. So for example, you have, so let, let me just say why vanishing cycles come as a rough, 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 uh, Mm, yeah, well, uh, how it comes from this picture, uh, and it comes, and it, it and it comes like this. Hmm? Characteristic cycle. Sorry. Uh, so, so we have we have a shift. So we have a point. We have a point here. So, mm, so we have a section here, and then, uh, and then uh, we have it comes from a section of the story. And what does it mean uh, to have a section of the thing? So if we have if we have a shift that corresponds, so the thing, and this element, if I restrict it to the complement to the singular support of my shift, it's trivialized. There is a section that just vanishes as an element of the quotient category. And so, given such an arrow, it produces you for every shift, uh, a uh, so consider the corresponding section here, and it produces a trivialization of the section. Uh, when you pull it back to the cotangent bundle and then restrict to the complement to of uh, of the um, uh, of the singular support. Okay. Now let's project the story from K theory to Z, just by by the Euler characteristic map. Then here we'll have Z of n, and then we'll pull it back here. And then you know that sections that sections of such things are the same as cycles of codimension and actually the Chow group. But if we consider the section supported on some subvarieties, this will be the Chow group of n cycles on this on this subvariety. And if the subvariety, our singular support, has dimension n, this means exactly that we know multiplicities at the generic point such. Yeah. Uh, so, so in this manner, the thing immediately, if you replace um, k, uh, k theory by z, it produces you in particular the cycle. And uh, believe me, it also produces you all formulas, uh, the global Euler characteristic formula, and so on. So uh, again, that is my hope, but, uh, <laughs> but I need to stop now. You say it's very hard to recognize the singular support. So, suppose I give you a closed irreducible subvariety of producers. Can you tell me what's the singular support and what's the characteristic cycle? Uh, what do you mean closed? I need to have a sheaf. A sheaf. Or take the constant, trivial constant sheaf. On, on well, the if it's, if it's, well, uh, uh, nobody, uh, if your subvariety is smooth, yeah. then it is a conormal, conormal bundle. Nothing that. If it's not smooth, then nobody knows. It depends on the singularity. On the singularity. What, what, what about the singularity? Can you tell what the No, I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. And it's uh, well. <laughs> if, if if it's not complete intersection, then then even you don't you don't know if it would be perverse shift or not. So so. Uh, Well, you know, Hello, and so you and, 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 and <coughs> briefly explain this, uh, this construction of the characteristic cycle, the multiplicity, is it required to conject one formula for it? Uh, what do you mean? You see, uh, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. from, the, uh, from this triangle. With the from this triangle? Okay. Mm. Conjectural formula for it. Okay. Mm, okay, so if I have. Uh, if I have uh, if I have a sheaf uh, sheaf on X, so I have a point here. So I will have a section here, and uh, and uh, just consider consider its image its image here. Then, since it is the same as if I pass first here to here, this will be a section of the sheaf of spectrum, which is trivialized on the complement of the singular support. Just because the image of the section here is trivialized on the complex on the on the complement of the singular support, because microlocal shift just vanishes outside. Okay, uh, and so you will have a section of this fellow, which is equipped. So you replace this, this by z, yes, uh, equipped with trivialization on the complement. This means that you have cohomology class with coefficient in the thing, uh, 
with support in the singular support. And this is absolutely the same as giving multiplicities. So you do actually need the trivialization on the complement to get that? Yes, or sure. Or just the fact that it's trivializable there? No, no, to get, to get, otherwise it will be element of the Chow group, of the Chow group of the cycles on. And if you consider uh, uh, cohomology of the thing supported on subvariety, it is the same as Chow group of the subvariety. And since it has same codimension n, that this is just a cycle at the generic points, nothing else. Another thing, I think one thing is clear on this question that if you take f and df, so the cc is the same. Uh, if I take f and dual, uh, because phi is compatible with duality. Uh, okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> and maybe you can see it here also. I hope. Yes, and actually, look somehow very um, think that I, I should say that there should be a relative picture picture for morphisms of varieties, which which is very much possible, and I would uh, would love to to know at least at least how how to spell it out, at least conjecturally. But again, uh, the support for this is that is that you have absolutely canonical canonical picture in the setting of real uh, real analytic varieties. Which is even nice in case of circle. <laughs> but uh, that means that in some sense you are looking for uh, some complex of sheaves in the cotangent space supported by the by the singular support, which uh, reflects the vanishing cycle. Ah, uh, it's not complex of sheaves. It is a section of the space. No, no, okay, but you are looking for a substitute. Yes, for a substitute. Yes, exactly. But yes. on the smooth part of the co uh, no, on the whole thing. On the whole thing. On the smooth part, uh, it is just uh, uh, the local system that you can, s in some sense, see with looking the vanishing cycle. Uh, yes, K, cl K class. K, it's it's K class, very probably, yes. But, but uh, with the micro local things, the, the, the Japanese uh, team, I mean, Kashiwara, Saito, they could not produce uh, uh, something? Uh, some some module micro local, I don't know. Ah. Uh, 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 probably they produce, but I believe they uh, they don't understand that at singular points, and uh, and uh, I I would like that the theory will be as rough as you you don't. Uh, yes, yes. I, I wanted to live everywhere since probably you need to know it everywhere to have actual picture on the level of whole K theory, probably. Not not for Euler characteristic you need to know it at the generic points only, uh, but but for Sattler. <laughs> uh, any, any more questions? So, so when you consider this uh, D upper mu on the cotangent on hysterx X mod GM, so yeah. this was for the, the risky topology. Uh -huh. so, so a several related question. One thing is that you, you, you use the word shift of triangulated categories. So I imagine that this means that there is a patching result when you work in some higher Context that you yes, of infinite, it's an infinite, stable infinite category, whatever. Then it's a shift, yes. And then uh, in the analytic case, what do you do? You don't have, if you just do analytic topology, how, how what do you? Same, absolutely same, <coughs> same, same thing. So you don't have enough, anal enough sing singular support in the comp that is. Uh, do you do, do you do it for complex analytic or real analytic? Uh, real analytic. It's you, you do it for real analytic thing. Ah, and then you have enough things with. Then you have enough, yes. I mean, all of them sit in sit in some some conormals, uh, and and it's 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 sort of a funny funny shift. Every section it's supported on, uh, well, it's supported in codimension n. <laughs> so. And what was the conjecture that you mentioned there when you spoke about this? You said there is a, a T structure and some conjecture that you didn't state. Ah, okay. So uh, that's just the words. So uh, as, as I told you, that every object here just, just 
if, if you start with a, with a sheaf, then as a section of d mu, as, as a micro, micro locally, it's supported on a singular support, yes? And now, uh, uh, what, uh, now suppose that you play not with triangulated categories, but with perverse sheaf with, uh, with the heart. Uh, so let's consider a, per, a perverse shift. Now, uh, uh, the following, so, so the thing, again, so it's supported in co-dimension N. Now, what, what you want to do is that the functor of restriction outside of co-dimension N plus one of these categories will be a faithful uh, restriction to co-dimension uh, 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 yes, and plus two, it will be fully faithful. Uh, and then uh, one, one, uh, one dimension less, it's an equivalence of categories. So, that, so this means that if I have, uh, if I have a micro-local perverse sheaf, then on the whole cotangent bundle or in, on at some domain, that it is the same as micro-local perverse sheaf uh, on its open subset, obtained by removing as many points of co-dimension co co and plus three as you want. And plus three, I think, or n plus four, I don't. This is for the analytic topology? Or for? Yes. Now, this, this is a very old conjecture in the context of uh, D-modules, or maybe D-modules with regular singularities. Uh, that was proved fairly recently, maybe three years ago, by Kashivara and Vilanian. They have in the archive, it's, it's called something called dimension three conjecture and so on. But uh, amazingly, they cannot prove, they, they prove it actually for a regular d model, so or perverse shift, but with coefficients in field of characteristic zero. Uh, for perverse shift with z model coefficients, uh, they don't know how to prove it. I mean, the proof, the proof is, is, is analytic. No, but uh, what is the statement? Because you, you define this, uh, <coughs> So you just take the quotient of dx by something, and since the singular support is also purely of dimension something, it does not make sense. I mean, it, no, uh, look. So so what happens? So suppose that you have perverse shift. Yes. Uh, look at its at the generic point of the sing at the singular support. There you have some some data, some categories that it would be nice to describe. Now your shift. Uh, if your shift is non-zero, then this data is non-zero, definitely, that you know. Now, uh, now you want to reconstruct your shift from this data. What you should do, you should add to it some, some data at co-dimension one more, some sort of a gluing data. If two components intersect by something of dimension n minus one, then you should add there some sort of a gluing data. Now, and this gluing data, this thing plus gluing data uniquely defines defines your shift. But in order to reconstruct the shift just from this gluing data, you should have uh, compatibility, which will sit in uh, one co-dimension more, a generic point and one co-dimension more. And the moment you have it, you don't need to go to go any deeper. No, but once you define this d mu of u as dx modulo, the, the six subcategory of singular support in the complement of u, when the complement of u is as large Co-dimension, more than the middle dimension. No, no. Uh, the thing is that you shifify. You shifify the story. So uh, when, when you define it using the quotients, mm -hmm. you get a pre-shift of, uh, pre of categories there. Now you consider the, uh, the true shift. And for this true shift, in principle, it could have a sort of a gluing data which lives deeper and deeper. Ah, you did not say that this is, ah, you have to shifify. Yes, yeah. So that, that was over precision, so I, I'm saying so vague things. Thanks, <laughs> Sasha, again. Thank you.